There's so much to appreciate with any given episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, and an episode that was dominated once again by giant action scenes. It would be the type of stuff that I would usually say that was fun and I'd move on with my day. I'm so appreciative of how good this production is and how they don't animate things in traditional senses. There was so many times in this episode that I was taken back by the level of detail that was put on the most simplest of movements that didn't need to be there and most anime fans would have ate it up as being an engaging fight. But the fight choreography and how they put the focus on so many minute details but really amplify into such an engaging spectacle is one of the many aspects that you really have to appreciate with Jujutsu Kaisen. Just the number of times that they'll put the focus on footwork, something that I don't really see all that often even in martial arts anime, but there'll be so many times the camera is purposely placed to focus on characters' feet and to see how they flip around or move so it understands like how their body reacted in a certain way. Generally with anime fight scenes, you focus on their face, you focus on their arms, and maybe their chest because they're getting a punch to the gut or there's an arrow coming at them. But rarely do you get so much emphasis put on the actual legs, which you could argue are probably the most important aspect alongside the fist itself in terms of where the body's going to go and how they're going to react. The dynamicness and just how great the camera works alongside, I would go as far to say, in this episode in particular, as much as I love the actual animation, a lot of the still frames are some of my favorite parts about the overall designs of the fight. They always play with perspective. They'll have a character and they'll like make the scene super long to really show the distance and just really set a mood. There's just so much about this show that I just, I take a step back and I say, rarely am I this impressed by fights. I can say, on a technical level, that's impressive. But the thing that makes this show so good isn't its technical abilities, which are, yeah, they're self-explanatory. On a technical level, Jujutsu Kaisen is flawlessly animated, but it's the actual substance behind those movements that make me appreciate these fight scenes so much. There's actually two times in this episode that I was reminded of two anime I really, really like in very different ways. The first was actually the water effects that our boy Megami uses when he summons his elephant spirit there, and he uses water. It reminded me of Demon Slayer when the main character uses water attacks. The way they animated that, I've only ever seen it done in Demon Slayer, and I was so ecstatic to see it done in Jujutsu Kaisen. Water effects are almost always the exact same in any anime, and if they are better than your average anime, they just look super hyper-realistic. But the way curses are designed in Jujutsu Kaisen, I've been complimenting it for 18 weeks now. I love how they're detailed, and the way they animated the water in the fight was breathtaking, and I hope to see more from fire to shadows and things like that. It is such creativity that you just don't get to see too often. And the second thing that I was reminded of was a feeling I haven't felt since the first season of Attack on Titan. There's a moment before this curse gets its head cut off, it's peering through the trees, and I was reminded of Titans back when I didn't know what a Titan was in Attack on Titan, and I was like, what in the actual hell, that is creepy, and then it got its head cut off. I love how it's able to invoke these feelings that I haven't felt in so long, and kind of just make me feel like anime is fresh and exciting again, things I haven't seen before, and it kind of gives you those thrills that you felt like you're never going to feel again because you felt them already, nothing's going to compare to it, and then Jujutsu Kaisen comes down, rams down your door, and says, hey, be a kid again and really appreciate the quality that you're witnessing. I really appreciated just how there was so much happening, and once again, they flipped what I thought this kind of school event was going to be on its head, to the point a giant barrier comes down, locks everyone actually in. You can go in. Except for Gojo. He can't go in. The one person who can't go in as you're fighting the top class crazy ass curse here who you don't actually understand but you do know the meaning of what it's saying and it seems like it's a curse that's kind of like bound and bent on protecting the earth which is honestly kind of amazing i didn't see that one coming i just really appreciate how this is a show that keeps you on your toes and you think okay we're watching megami we're watching him do some crazy maneuvers and that's going to be fun it's time to put our focus on him you're getting even more amazing content with Curse Speech Boy, which is probably my favorite ability in the show. Just the idea that he limits himself to saying like stuff like tuna or salmon doesn't say too much, but when he does, don't move. You have to obey his curse speech. That is some of the coolest idea for a power I've seen, and I can't wait to see more of that ability. I just like it because you really think you know what to expect in this episode, as the majority of it is, well, they're fighting, and of course we have the whole plot line of 
well, they're trying to kill our main character, Yuji. And then you end up with Gramps shredding on a guitar, and I'm like, you know what? I didn't care much about you, but now that I see that your weapon's a guitar, go ahead, my man, you're now my new favorite character until Panda comes back on screen. It's just so fun how it makes you think that it's just going to be another event where they're trying to fight the characters, they're destroying curses, and of course, they're trying to kill the main character. And they have this plan, it looks all good, and then the big bads have to come and crash it down, kill apparently what was considered to be a pretty deadly curse, like it was basically paper mache as you deal with something that no matter how much you hit it, it literally has no damage applied to it. This is going to be interesting, and I'm really hoping to see some of the more adult characters, the teachers, the students, and things like that work together, because this is one of those things that you rarely get to see, but when you do get to see it, you're saying, okay, the students are fighting for their life, and they're not able to defeat it, and then they have to have the big bad bosses come in to say, you know what, we're going to help you, and then they get their shit pushed in, and then they have to work together. It's something you don't get to see too often, but I'm really excited to see what they're going to be able to pull off with it, because with six episodes left to go, Jujutsu Kaisen has a lot left to do. I imagine it'll probably be one or two more episodes before this part ends and then maybe the last four episodes or so. I'm not sure if they would start a new arc or not, or if it'd be more conclusion slash setup for what would be a second season or where you'd pick up if you read the manga. But still, Jujutsu Kaisen has a lot to work with, and on a technical level, this episode was gorgeous, it was breathtaking, it's everything I wanted, and it invoked feelings of excitement from animation techniques I haven't seen before, or only have seen one time before, or the fear of having titans walking through a city that's being destroyed and I'm like, oh man, how are you going to deal with that? And then you see something even bigger and badder than that. It's exciting, it's fun, but it keeps you on your toes. And this is a show that this is easily all the show could have been. It's just really cool fights and it would have blew up in popularity. Just look at how well animated it is. But the thing that keeps it so great is just the smaller details that make the fight so great. On a personal level, you know what the characters are fighting for and what they're defending and the beliefs that they have. But then you have these, like, when you focus in, you're like, why are they putting so much focus on how the characters move in a realistic way, despite being surrounded by all this insane supernatural curse energy? Well, because even though there is technically magical things happening, at a base level, they're humans, and they still should move like a realistic human, and you want something to be remembered as not something that had a cool-looking punch, but it felt realistic for the scene at hand. Jujutsu Kaisen is in another level for both entertainment but also substance in its writing, and I am so excited to see what this devastating curse is going to do next week, and how the characters are going to get out of it if they will get out of it. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below. What did you think, and where do you think it's going to go with episode 19? I mean, the thing I'm most excited for is to see Gramps shred on a guitar, because who doesn't want to see that, alongside seeing a talking panda. That's just self-explanatory excitement there. Let me know yours down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you're happy new around here. Since next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.